Hello, I've got a riddle for you. Italian automaker Ferrari has a prancing horse on their logo. Do you know perhaps which of the car brands has a wild hen or chicken on its logo? Hi, welcome to Let's Talk English, the weirdest language channel in all of YouTube. I'm Marcin. Regardless of whether you are a chauffeur, a trucker or a car enthusiast, this episode is tailor-made for you. If you happen to be an inhabitant of a country outside Europe, this vehicle may not ring a bell. It's a 2008 first-generation restyled Skoda Octavia with a stock conversion to LPG for better fuel economy. Unlike the USA, where fuel comes at affordable price, here European Union member states impose such ridiculous taxes on fuel that they are now hitting the roof. Now, some of you may wonder why I've picked such a blend car that doesn't turn anyone's head on the street. Well, firstly, I like to swim against the tide, and if a vehicle appeals to me as this one does, why should I worry if it's not somebody else's cup of tea? Secondly, this Octavia has a reputation for being an extremely reliable car. You would have to give it your best shot at neglecting the maintenance work to break it. Apart from air conditioning, my car comes with no other extras. And this is what I appreciate about all the cars. The fewer luxury items you get, the longer maintenance free they are. As you can see, this example of Octavia is a hatchback body. In passenger cars, one can distinguish more bodyworks though. Here they are. A sedan, American English. A saloon, British English. A hatchback. A lift bag. A station wagon, American English. An estate wagon, British English. A convertible. A coupe. A targa. A minivan. A pickup. Now, let's talk about the elements which make up the front of the car. First thing up is a front bumper. A license plate, American English. A number plate, British English. Above the bumper, there is a grill. Next up is a headlight lamp. It contains a running light, a low light, a high beam, a fog light, and an indicator. By means of these lights, you make yourself visible to other road users. Moving on, if you want to get access to your car's engine bay, you have to pull a special latch. Now, in most cars, the latch in question is located at the bottom of the dashboard. Once you have pulled the latch, you go up to your car's front end and you open the hood in American English or the bonnet in British English. When you open the bonnet, you are facing the engine bay. Various parts make up an average car's engine bay. Now, we will not go into depth on all of them. I wouldn't want to bore you to death. Instead, we shall only take a glance at the most important ones that keep the car running. You need a fair amount of power to start up the engine or to run electronic systems on your car. All these actions are performed thanks to battery. This big black box up on the right is an air filter box. 
Then there is a washer fluid reservoir down on the left. Next up on the left there is a coolant reservoir. If you need to check your engine oil level you pull out a dipstick. If your engine oil level is too low you unscrew an oil cap and you refill the oil. Engine fluids such as a power steering fluid, a coolant or a washer fluid are all transported in these long rubber items known as hoses. Now, if one of your hoses leaks, you either need to seal it or replace it. Now that we've covered respective elements in the engine bay, it's time to move on with the next section of the car. When you drive, you need good visibility to see what is going on on the road ahead. And for that, you need a windshield. Below the windshield, there are windshield wipers. When you cast an eye over a car profile, you can notice an alloy wheel. The rubber part of the wheel is called a tire. Then you've got a side mirror in American English or a wing mirror in British English. And finally, on the extreme right, there is a rear bumper. Before you get in a car, you go up to a car door, you pull a door handle and there is the interior. This particular interior features a passenger seat in the foreground, a handbrake, a driver's seat, a seat belt, a gated shifter for manual gearbox and a glove compartment. Now we find ourselves in the interior of the car. As you can see, it doesn't blow anybody's mind. It's very plain, it's very greyish. I wouldn't say that an average driver or car enthusiast would uh, feel that this car appeals, that this interior appeals to him. When traveling on front seats, first thing up facing you is a dashboard. The dashboard comprises a gauge cluster, vents, hazard lights and a passenger's airbag. Beneath central vents you have a fuel cap opener, a rear defroster and a radio. When looking down there is a climate control panel with ventilation control knobs and air conditioning switch and right at the bottom there is an ashtray. Almost forgot, I've skipped a cigarette lighter. If you want to check the traffic behind you, you look in the rear view mirror. If you travel after dawn and want to reach out for something or read something but it is too dark, you switch on a dome light or a reading light. If you are driving in the direction of the sun, which is blinding you, you unfold a sun visor. On the driver's door panel, you have power window switches, along with central lock switch. For adjusting your side mirrors, or for heated mirrors, you use side mirrors panel. Every car with a manual gearbox comes with three pedals on the driver's floor. A clutch pedal. A brake pedal. And an acceleration pedal. Now, on the left from the steering wheel, there is light switch. And next to it, you have light self-leveling wheel. Next up is a somewhat driver's command center with the steering wheel and the horn. As we take a close-up of the gauge cluster, on the left you can see a tachometer or a rev counter as it is referred to in other variants of English. 
Next you have a clock. Then there is coolant temperature gauge. Next up there is fuel level gauge. A speedometer to read your current speed. And finally an odometer to read the total mileage of your car. Now that we've thrown some light on the front of the interior, it's time we said a few words about the rear seats. As you can see, you won't find much here. Apart from the rear seats in question, there are some headrests attached to the top of the seats and a window lever. When you turn it, the window goes down. When you turn it the other way, it goes up. When you get out of your vehicle and come up to the back of your car, first up are the rear lights. Then you have a tailgate. If you want to access the trunk or the boot, you open the tailgate. An average trunk or a boot comes with a spare wheel and first aid kit. If you want to say how much stuff you can pack into your trunk, you talk about cargo capacity or trunk capacity. If you like this video, hit subscribe button and give us a like. New videos on various topics coming up very soon. Thanks for watching.